Mr. Polk, why don't you uh, talk a little bit, first of all, about your family, uh, the, uh, uh, both the McLeans and uh, your grandfather that came here in 1915. Okay. If I might, I'm going to say something before we get started on that. Uh, I live in Carrollton, Georgia, which is 50 miles from here. And I went to college at West Georgia. And as I was coming over this morning, I remembered a, a classmate, Doug Biddy, and I drove to Carrollton on Sunday night, came home on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was thinking like when Doug and I started the school over there, we might see 50 cars between Ackworth and Carrollton. Mm -hmm. and, and this morning it was bumper to bumper, but it was a somewhat of a existential moment, if you will be, for just what it was and what it is. And, and with that, I will move along. So Ackworth is a different point. Oh, it, all of it is, all the way through. Yeah. Uh, now, my family history, uh, my mother and father, uh, George W. Pope Sr. My mother is uh, Julia McLean Pope. And both of their families uh, were somewhat influential in Ackworth over the years. Mother's father, his name was George Washington McLean. And, and I'm, I'm gonna regress just a little bit. And, but his father's name was, uh, uh, well, here we go, uh, uh, John uh, McLean, M-C-L-A-I-N. And he, they, his family moved to Cobb County from South Carolina. Now they settled in, at Mars Hill. And what is called somewhat the Red Rock community in Mars Hill area. And uh, he, my great grandfather, was a pretty, he had a lot of land. He, he, he owned a lot of land, was a very well-to-do man. Uh, they moved from Mars Hill into Ackworth, okay? And, and then that's where, uh, the mothers was born. All okay, right. So John moves into Ackworth? But yes, sir. And then and his son uh, is, like I say, George, George Washington Wilson. McLean. All right, that's, that's my grandfather. All right, now, he had, uh, at the turn of the century and on up into the 20s, 30s, 40s, up through there, uh, he owned a livery stable that was on the north end of town. Actually, there is a picture of it in the archives that Mac has at the History Center. And there's a picture of his of a livery stable. And, and you can see it, and it's, I mean, you can clearly see on it, G.W. McLean. And he also owned a dry goods store. And then uh, at one time, he owned the Ackworth Hotel, which was on Main Street of, uh, I don't know the names of the streets anymore, but uh, when you go through the middle of town, anybody, I think most people would remember where the old hotel was. Was it and, about where Henry's is? I, I think so. And it, it was called, at one time it was a Lynchfield, I believe it was, hotel. And then uh, my grandfather McLean owned it and it was just the Ackworth Hotel. Uh, they tore it down in like 60 or 61. Uh, now, mother, family lived right next door to the hotel on Main Street. Uh, that's where my grandmother and grandfather lived, all right? And <laughs> this thing gets kind of convoluted, but I, I want to take it out for people to hear, if you don't mind. <clears throat> all right. My grandmother's sister lived next door to her. Now, her name, and we always called her, well, she was Aunt Ned, and her name was Aunt Nettie Lou uh, Devonport, all right? Now, Karen Devonport, who is my cousin, obviously, because Aunt Nett and, 
and my grandmother McLean were sisters. And and Karen and I, well, Karen's 15 minutes older than I am, or 30. We were born same time at, uh, at the hospital in Marietta. And I always tell her that she's older. I get on to her when we have birthdays. But anyway, if you go on down Main Street, uh, the, the Mac and I talked about this, is the, the sidewalk was actually lower than the highway. And if, uh, as you go south there, uh, the, the next house uh, was Jenny Mae Terry's house. And I don't remember who owned the next one. But then it had Boone's service station. And I'm not getting away from my family. I'm just moving in a roundabout kind of way. Okay. And then I had another aunt who is, well, it was mother's aunt, uh, Pace Yarber, uh, lived up next to what was Burger's old fruit stand. Uh, okay. Pace's mother was, uh, okay, uh, my grandmother's sister as well. Now, Pace was the first. And I don't quite know what title to give Pace for the uh, when he worked for the city. Uh, he drove the fire truck, the volunteer fire department. Uh, uh, he looked after water meters. Uh, he collected taxes. Uh, I, you couldn't call him a city manager, but uh, but in in 1950, 1955, up through there, it was a one man show when you had 1,800 people that lived in the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, if, we, if we go on down a little further, then uh, uh, is where I grew up, which is on Park Street. But I'm gonna back up to the McLean family. Mama was one of seven children. And they, mo well, all right, Mama was uh, the, the fifth, Fourth one born, but anyway, uh, the her brothers and sisters. I'm I'm not I'm not struggling here. I really am, but I'm trying to figure out the order. Uh, my uncle Pascal lived here in town. Uncle Packy, we called him. He lived right here in town. Uh, my aunt Evelyn lived here, and she was uh, married to Connie Baldwin. My uncle Connie was worked for the railroad, and he managed the depot. In, in Cartersville. Then uh, Uncle Packy had a, Uncle Pascal had a truck stop up at, uh, at Cashville, Georgia, if you will, and probably one of the first ones that ever was. I mean, it was, this goes all the way back to the 50s. But then uh, the uh, mom had another sister that lived here in town. Uh, that was uh, my aunt Ruth, and 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 then that part plays way out uh, to her children, and and uh, my great grandfather, where he is buried, and having been in the Civil War, which is a pretty interesting story unto itself. But anyway, uh, uh, my granddaddy McLean, and I well, I read this somewhere. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting that up north people have grandmothers and grandfathers. In the South, they have mamas and pawpaws and, <laughs> and that sort of thing. And, and that's the reason I, I just, I, 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 you know, I, we won't get into that, but at any rate. So you know, I grew up here uh, on Park Street, at 102 Park Street. And, and then that's where the Pope side comes into play, if you will. Yeah. And it sounds like nobody moved away. Well, no, no, nobody that. moved away. Absolutely not. Uh, it, it just, it was unheard of in those days. And actually my grandmother, my, my grandfather died in that house. My grandmother died in that house uh, of, of where all of mama's family was raised right there on Main Street. Before, before we get to the uh, folks, why don't you talk about your great grandfather in the Civil War? Was well, John? yes, sir. Now, Boy, all right. In 1863, he joined the Confederacy. 
and uh, I was part of the uh, Cobb, it was called the Cobb Regiment, which was Cobb County, all right. And eventually, he became a part of Hood's Texas Regiment or company. He was involved, now this is, this is really neat, I think. Now he was a sergeant and he was wounded in and around somewhere in Virginia. Now, I, I don't recall the battle. I do have the information, but he was wounded and the Confederacy was making a withdrawal in whatever this battle was, this was 1860, early 1864, and he was wounded but he was left and the Union forces captured him and was taken to a Union hospital where he stayed for three months. And if he would, he got better and he was told if he would not join the Confederacy again that they would release him and he could go home. So he did, he came back to Georgia, uh, went back to the family at, out, it, where at this point was still at Mars Hill. Uh, the farm had been ravaged and the house looted everything they had. The family had <clears throat> retreated. The family had moved with what belongings they could get to the west and to the southwest of Atlanta to try to retain what they had. Refugees. Yes, that's exactly. That was, refugees. Yes, sir. Well, that, that was it. All right, so on Sherman, in part of this business of Sherman marching to the sea, my great-grandfather re-enlisted in the Confederacy. Oh, he went again back on his word. Went back on his word, which was a bad thing, absolutely. But it was part of the Confederacy for him to be in. And, and he was a third lieutenant this time. Now, my third, I don't, I've never heard of that, but, but it actually is on the, the mark on the headstone showing that he was a third lieutenant. Uh, he, he never surrendered his sword. He never surrendered his pistol. Uh, but in his, uh, my cousins actually had his sword and my two cousins, uh, Aunt Ruth's boys, Buddy and, and uh, Joel Smith, uh, that was, uh, the, that was a big deal, having his sword and his pistol. Now he died in like, I wanna say 1910, I believe, but he died in the house mm -hmm. on Main Street. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a legacy, that side of the McLean family. And of course his son did very well. All right, now my grandfather McLean, I'm gonna regress, George Washington. Yes, sir, George Washington. Uh, and I had said he was a somewhat influential man in Aquith. He was a mayor. Uh, you know what year he was born? I want to say 18, I, I honestly, I don't remember. Post war? Yes, sir. Yeah, oh yes, definitely post war. Uh, then, like I said, okay, now Sherman didn't burn the Methodist church when he came to Ackworth. Uh, and the reason he didn't burn it was the Masonic Lodge was in the Methodist church. And it is said that Sherman was a Mason. And therefore, he didn't burn the church. Well, then when the church changed locations, that church got torn down. And then the, there was a new Methodist church built on North Main Street, faced right onto the street, right looking at the railroad track. Uh, and my, my grandfather, George Washington, was on the board of trustees for that church for the construction, raising the money and all to have that church built up there. Uh, and, you know, I, I, Pretty proud of that, I, I would dare say. Uh, and it it stayed there 
Now, of course, it's been torn down now until they built the one at what is called up on the hill of the Lord, the Methodist Church, built that one up and got money, got the land from the Corps of Engineers. And my, my dad and my uncle Connie Baldwin were on the board of trustees. Mm -hmm. When that church was built, when the church voted to move and go up there and, and, mm -hmm. and, and be there, uh, and so that was, I mean, that's a church that I grew up in was a Methodist church. Uh, now, you know, Bill Abbott's been here and, 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 and he and I went to high school together and Bill is his background. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw this one out there. His uncle, Fred Abbott, uh, after my aunt Ruth's husband died, they were an item in Carroll, I mean, in, in Ackworth. Uh, they dated for a long time, and and I always sort of thought maybe they might both of them might have married, but then they never did. But that was that's Bill's uncle, uh, and, and 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 at any rate, uh, so Mama would tell the story that when she was a baby, she was now Mama was born in 1910, and this would have been about 1920, we'll say 1908. She would talk about that. She would take her younger brother, George McLean, and they would slip off from the house and they would go to the livery stable and swim in the horse trough. <laughs> and of course, they got in trouble for it. And so I used to tell her, well, don't you say, if I do anything, don't you get on me, you swimming in a horse trough and walking the railroad tracks. And your mother told you she'd wear you out if you did that. Uh, but but anyway, the, the McLeans, uh, uh, family, uh, been around, uh, my uncle Pascal, he had four children that grew up here in Ackworth. Uh, all of them, uh, either went to Ackworth or North Cobb High School. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, three boys and a girl. Uh, and, uh, and then my family of, that went either to Ackworth or, I mean, my siblings, if you will, that went to, uh, Ackworth or North Cobb High School. Yeah. Um, right. Well, tell about the Popes. Okay. That one is, uh, okay, I'm, and, and so this will make some sense. I'm the baby. My dad was the baby. Mother was not the baby, but she was close to being the baby, being born 1910. And when I came along, I don't really have a vivid recollection of my grandparents because of an age thing. And it was easy to follow, if you will, and I know I've rambled about the McLean family. Uh, I probably should have just gone child by child. But now the Popes, my granddaddy Pope, and uh, his name uh, was John Pope. And his wife's name, uh, uh, my, my grandmother Pope, uh, um, I'll think of her name in a minute. I'm sorry, Doc. I, I mean, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, my grandfather Pope was the blacksmith for the Knoxville Brewery in Knoxville, Tennessee. Is that right? And... He was a very skilled artisan and mechanic with metal. Now, they moved, my grandparents, Pope grandparents, moved to Ackworth some, around 1920. And the reason that my grandfather Pope came to Aqua is he went to work at the cotton mill, which was then Ackworth Mills. It was owned by the Masons. And uh, my granddaddy Pope was a superintendent. I don't know how they met. Uh, I, I, I never had an opportunity, when I had an opportunity, I just never thought to ask why or how uh, they got here and how he met Mr. Mason. Mm -hmm. All right, 
Now then, they, they <clears throat> came to Aqua. Uh, Daddy was one of four children. Uh, his oldest brother, whose name was Elmer, Elmer was born in 1890, I mean 1890. Now Elmer lived, Uncle Elmer lived in Chattanooga and he worked for the railroad. All right, and my Uncle Ross was the next in line and you have interviewed two of his granddaughters, okay. Pat and Casey and her sister. And I say Casey, that's their maiden name. <clears throat> now, Uncle Ross worked for the railroad. Well, the depression hit and he lost his job with the railroad. And he was in Chattanooga as well. Now, Daddy and my Aunt Frony, don't ask me to spell it, they were living in Ackworth. All right. Now, Daddy's of age by this time, the 30s. They were born off seven. All right. Granddaddy Pope was superintendent of the mill. Uncle Ross moved to Ackworth. And he went to work for my granddaddy at the mill. And he was the number three man, if you will. Uh, now this is on up toward the depression. My dad, the, the company store, if you will, was right down by the mill village, right down by, which is now Coates, well, I don't know what it is now, but it was Coates and Clark, but I think it's even, it's closed down because I've been gone for 50 years. Mm -hmm. But then daddy and mother ran the company store. Mm -hmm. And then eventually daddy went, well, he was working for the mill, but he went to work in the mill and he was over a uh, part of it. And I don't know all the names. There was the looms and the weavers and this, that and the other, but he was over part of it. So here you got my granddaddy superintendent, his two sons are working in the mill. Uh, then up toward the fifties, uh, I would say the Masons, I, I'm guessing at the, at the year, but somewhere in there, the Masons sold the mill to Coates and Clark. And uh, granddaddy retired. Uh, uh, Uncle Ross and Daddy thought they were worth more money than they were, and uh, the new management wished them well. <laughs> so they, they pursued further things. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, but Uncle Ross and, and Daddy were, I mean, they were all real, real close. Now, my grandmother, and I told you I'd think of her name, Martha Jean. And the reason that I said that there's some things about the Pope family, my grandmother Pope, for lack of a better description, was an indentured servant. She lived with a family in Knoxville. And she took that family's name, which was Shipley. And Later on, Daddy tried to find the history of my grandmother, his mother. But at this point, everybody had whatever, uh, and we had whatever they had passed on. So we as a family really don't know a lot about my grandmother, Pope. Uh, and, and for that time and that age, you know, all the women stayed home, okay? Uh, they weren't in the workforce, if you will. Uh, well, I say all of them, I mean yeah. part of them. Sure. Now, the house that I grew up in is on the corner of Park Street in South Main. It's still Park Street. And the house was built, there's some question as to when the house was built, if it was built in the 1850s or the 1860s. Now, it is still there. Mm -hmm. All right. There was a commons school, if you will, where boys and girls 
went to school to learn life skills. And it's a little bit ambiguous as to where the school really was or really wasn't. Uh, there's two or three versions on it. The house that I grew up in, my grandfather purchased in the 20s or 30s, was a dormitory for the common school. Now then, supposedly two doors down on Park Street from my house, or my parents' house, was the school building. But it burned and, and a building was rebuilt. Now Mrs. Ruth Ford and her husband lived in that house ever since I could remember. And I mean, I can only remember, I mean, 1950, but they were there way prior to that. But supposedly that was a, that's where the classrooms were. Now, directly across the street from our house uh, was uh, uh, the Tumlins lived on that corner. Then going on back toward town, there was a, a big old, and I, I don't know if it's still there or not, behind what was Burger Fruit Stand, was a big old two-story white house. That was where the girls lived. And the boys lived in the house that I grew up in. All right, now our house, just point of interest more than anything, uh, it was a basement and two stories. Uh, the rooms are 15 feet square with 11 foot ceilings. And they were stacked. One, two, just, there were eight rooms identical, one right on top, I mean, one on top of the other. A hall, six foot hallway all the way down on the bottom, set of steps going up, six foot hallway on the top. The basement, was the kitchen and the dining room and the root cellar. All right, and up until, I guess till daddy died, he used that old root cellar when he would, he had a big garden and, and, and he would can stuff and he'd put it up mm -hmm. and he'd put it in that root cellar back in there. Now the house is still over there and it's been remodeled somewhat and it's still, I guess, in pretty good shape. I've been, it's a, uh, law office now or a mortgage lawyers or something. I'm, I'm not real sure. Uh, it's across the street from, uh, well, Eddie Jones's tire shop is there now. There was a Sinclair service station uh, when, when I was a kid and I, I can't recall exactly who lived, who owned it, but. I, I don't know anything about the common school. Do you know how long it operated or um, where, uh, where the students came from that they had to live in dormitories or what? Oh. Or just exactly um, uh, uh, who was it for? Well, as best I know, and I'm on call that I should have Googled it to find out exactly. According to what Mother and Daddy always said, the common school was the kids came from surrounding area, mm -hmm. communities, crossroads, uh, uh, you know, Bethel Church, uh, Mount Zion, all this kind of stuff where it was all out. And where for, like I said, for life skills that maybe for the ones that didn't have a school to go to or there wasn't a public education and they went to this common school, I cannot swear to that. Is that a public school? Well, yes, sir. It's, that's what that was it. Okay, so you got Atworth School. Yes, sir. You got you got a Mill Village School too. Yes, sir. And then this school. Yeah. But it was for adults or older people. Common school yeah, yes, for sir. adults. Yeah, more so. Not it wouldn't have been, but it would have been people. As I, again, as I understood it, that would have been say over sixteen. Right. Just, I'm on so arbitrary like pull that number. Technical number. school. Yeah, I, I think that would might be a, a good description. I, uh, I'm probably going to need to look it up and see, but see, and that was the thing that I was saying a minute ago about me being the baby. <clears throat> There's so much that I missed. Now, the people that you've interviewed, like Matt Turner, well, you have him, and all of us who came through here, uh, I mean, we grew up together, obviously, and in, uh, in the the time of innocence, which was the 50s and the 60s, uh, or the late 50s, early 60s, of, of just not knowing how dumb we really were 
and that there was really a big world out there. Uh, uh, not that we were dumb, not by any stretch, but still, uh, we were pretty sheltered, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, Akron's 15, 1,800 people, uh, Kennesaw, uh, probably the same, and the, the kids at Kennesaw went to school at Sprayberry. Of course, you had Ackworth up here. Uh, now, uh, I have the one that should be in this chair is my older sister, and, and, and I have begged them, but, and her name is Pat Chilton. And now, Pat, like I say, my oldest sister, and I'm not gonna call any ages, but I will say this, my mother's family believe firmly that a proper young lady didn't get married till she was 18 years old. I, mm -hmm. I always heard that. Mm -hmm. Mama was born in 1910. Dad was born in all seven. She turned 18, 1928, and they got married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Pat was born sometime after that. Well, I'm gonna just let it go at that. Okay. All, right. all right. Now, Pat was graduated from Ackworth High School when they had 11 grades. Didn't have 12, you had 11. Pat went on and she went to college at Wesleyan. Okay. And she married uh, uh, Warren Chilton by the name of Red, we called him Red, that was his nickname. Mm -hmm. uh, they lived in Marietta. Now, Pat came back and taught school at Ackworth. Now she was a graduate, college, came back. All right, then she took a little time off. Then when I was in high school from 59 to 63, she taught at North Cobb. And, and there and there's a lot of kids, you know, remember, mm -hmm. I mean, Pat being there. Uh, you were in about the first class at North Cobb. Yes, sir. We, 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 the, the extended class, extended. Mm -hmm. I mean, the full four years, right. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. And I, I get a kick out of saying this. There were 400 plus or minus a few mm -hmm. in the high school. I'm talking about the whole high school. 80 something of us in the graduate, it was 89, I think, in the graduating class in 63. And now they got that many policemen down there. And it's a police precinct is at North Cobb. I'm not being ugly, but I, I dare say they probably got 2,000, 2,200 students now. And, and boy, uh, I mean, we didn't, it, it, this was a combination of Akron and Kennesaw, both coming up. Uh, now, uh, my brother, uh, he is uh, Don Pope, and he, he graduated from Ackworth. And I believe, I always thought he was, he always got mad, I think, because the year he got to be a junior or in 11th grade, they added the 12th grade. Okay. So he had to go 12 years. Yeah. And anyway, but he goes on and he goes to tech and uh, he goes and he works with Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, uh, retires from McDonnell Douglas, uh, and and uh, and did very 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 well there, mm -hmm. and he lives in Arizona. But and then I have another. Well, she is deceased, uh, Judy. Uh, now uh, she graduated from Ackworth, and the she <laughs> Judy graduated from college. It uh, well she went to Maryville College. Then she went to this is I'll throw one out there you probably never even heard of GSCW that was Georgia State College for Women yeah, sure. at Milledgeville sure. and, and and she went down there for a while mm -hmm. and then uh, her husband to be uh, was from West Virginia and and ended up she graduated from the University of Pittsburgh that's where Bill her husband went to medical school uh, now they lived in Marietta Judy died uh, seven eight years ago and a great great lady I mean I, I, all my siblings are really great siblings and sisters and brothers and what have you. And all of them have done, I must say, very well. I, I don't, I used to, I often wondered how well I've done. I don't know, sometimes I ask that. And I had said, uh, I said to Mac, I said, you know, that old class of 64, 63, 62, I don't know how many doctors and lawyers and what have you graduated if there were any uh, but we I think all of the people did rather well 
mm-hmm. uh, for just, as Matt likes to say, good old boys and girls, yeah. and good solid citizens and contributors to- so was Matt in your class? No, sir, he was, he was a grade behind me. Right. And, you were born in 45? Yes, sir. And yeah, okay, uh, yeah, and and there were uh, like I said, the Casey's. Their mother actually was my first cousin, and they were five, six girls and two boys. And but their mom was was uh, my dad's niece, and uh, Jerry Bearden, who grew up right along here, he was in my grade. And Jerry asked me not long ago, just how are you and Pat Casey again? I got to figure this out. And I said, well, their great grandfather and my grand, you know, like this. Uh, but now, and Mike Donahue, who came in and, and did a, I thought was just a, a marvelous interview. Mm-hmm. Tommy Long did, did a great, and there's, I haven't seen them all. Oh, yeah. uh, Tommy Long would have been in your class. Oh, yes. We, we, oh, we, de- we went to school. I caught chickens out of his house, and I read daddy chicken out. Uh-huh. Uh, I think all of us at some point or another went through there caught chickens and if you if you look back at it at uh, 1959 1960 1961 if you got four dollars and gas was 23 cents a gallon you see that goes a long way and and of course Tommy has, has done very well and was very eloquent and I I've, I'm, I'm struggling here knowing that I came in behind them but what I was going to say is is that Mike Donahue's mother, and my mother were kin. Okay. Now, I talked to Mike, and we hadn't quite got it worked out yet, but we know they, and they were, they, they were like maybe second cousins, if you will. So you're basically kin to everybody in that world from those days. <laughs> but we, and see, there you go, and it, and it goes, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be that, but, but it does. It, there's um, a lot of kinship, a lot of people uh, our, our kin and, and married folks, and the the uh, the Kingles, for instance, and I don't know if you've heard that name. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and I, oh, my wife says, don't tell it all. And I interviewed the uh, both Rick and Bob, but also their parents. Oh, okay, Randy was, years, years well, Randy and my sister Judy dated. Uh-huh. All right, and they had a unique knitting mill. Well, now, you're in the middle of the Bible Belt right here. I mean, this is the book. Mm-hmm. All right. The Kennels and the Robinsons were Catholic. Yeah. And, and Robinson? Yes, sir. Well, it, this was Cotton Robinson. This was, uh, uh, he worked at Lockheed, and uh, his niece, Penny Robinson, and I graduated from high school together. They had four children. She had three siblings. And her mother taught all of us hoodlums and dance. And we would go, we were 12 or 13 years old, and we'd go over and the girls would be on one side, we'd be on the other side. Mm-hmm. We're out there doing the, you know, the two step and the, and, and the waltz and all this kind of stuff. I mean, you know, why is mama making me come over here? You know, that kind of thing. But, and we've, and this is a having been in education, but in those days, you had fish on Friday for lunch. Always had fish. That was for obvious. Well, the, the you know Catholics and sure. and 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 uh, so everybody else ate fish also. That's right. On, on yeah, it wasn't just four or five people got it. You had fish on Friday, ever Friday. You knew mm-hmm. that was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I look back on some of that, and and I realize how golden that was, and and that nowadays you wouldn't in this time and age, people would not even consider it, would even think about it, would even uh, to, to say that someone was Catholic and 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 we're Baptist and Methodist and. Episcopalian and, and, and Presbyterian and what have you. That's, that's not even a thing. It wasn't a, a stigma by no stretch of the imagination, but uh, I, I just, I know that was one of the things I mean, and, and that uh, when we grew up, just the difference of people that were here and uh, it, it was a, a great group. And by the way, I will tell you this, Penny Robinson was smart. I mean, she was some kind of smart. Uh, uh, and she was in my class. I don't remember Exactly who her 
brothers and sisters were. But anyway, um, and so what you're saying that uh, uh, Catholics and Protestants got along very well, or didn't? No, we got along fine, but. And I probably shouldn't even wish to. Maybe you need to edit that out. I just, uh, I, I just think no, back. To some, but uh, it, it was you a were aware of the difference. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, okay. and 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 uh, and I think everybody what well, didn't make any difference. But uh, yeah. but anyway, yeah. And then the the it's it's like Abbott or Barry Riesel who is deceased, and but the 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 mix of people that I grew up with mm -hmm. was just a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I have, and I tell, I say this sometimes, we were all dirt poor. We just didn't know. Uh, there weren't a good side, there wasn't a bad side. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you wore Bilbo Hall, that wasn't no sin or if you had jeans, or if, if you, and I think everybody, up till we got in high school, just about all the boys at some time or other wore Bill O'Hall and, 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 and jeans, and I don't know, it just, uh, and when I say we just didn't know we didn't have anything. We, uh, parents worked at Lockheed, uh, a lot of the parents worked at Lockheed. Uh, it was well for Cobb County, without a doubt. Uh, and it was a high-paying job, for instance. Yeah. So, um, uh, every, yeah, well, uh, you're really describing kind of a sheltered existence. Oh, it I was. Guess, no doubt. Uh, oh, it was. Uh, but there obviously were people that are a lot poorer than you were. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. No doubt. But you didn't dare. Say it. He didn't dare say it. My daddy had a great faith uh, praise for it. Son, you got to remember that there's some people in this life not as fortunate as you are. And I've tried to live that my whole life. That there are some folks that are not as fortunate as I am. And all of us that grew up here, I think, had that. Uh, uh, the, the, the street that I grew up on, we'll go back there a little bit. Uh, I mean, uh, the kids were just sort of all over town. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't no such thing as a subdivision. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I don't know, maybe there were clusters, if you will. The Mill Village obviously had probably more than anybody. But that was because their parents worked at the mill. Yeah. And, and that wasn't no sin because on July the 4th, when the mill had the big barbecue, they had, oh, they had a huge barbecue. And everybody in town wanted <laughs> to, to go to the, you had to have tickets. Now you couldn't just slip in down there, you know, and you know, you know, you know your parents don't work here. You get out of the line, yeah. <laughs> you're not even supposed to be here. Now, by the time you were going through school, were the mill kids still going to the mill school? Or oh, no, so they, the, the mill school was long gone. That's what I thought. It was long gone. So, uh, so you all played football? Oh, played absolutely. Ackworth, Ackworth School is still where it is. Uh, I'm, the Ackworth School that we went to uh -huh. is still over sure. there. Uh, uh, we had buses, obviously. And in you those days, oh yeah, I mean, not the city kid, but from out in the country. Okay. And uh, in those days, a lot of bus drivers owned their own buses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, but all of them, out toward Mars Hill, if you will, so the, and, and the, where we are here, but the county line is just right over here. Mm -hmm. And you know, people on the other side went to Cherokee County and up toward Grizzletown. And, uh, Bartow County comes in down there and those people went up to cars or gas or wherever they went. And then all of us here went to Ackworth School mm -hmm. and from Ackworth School to North Cobb. Uh, and like I said, <clears throat> up until 59, uh, the kids at, at uh, Kennesaw either went to Sprayberry or they went to Marietta. Uh, and 
for instance, okay, when we grew up, okay, North Cobb High School, there were five high schools in the county plus Marietta City School. Uh, there's probably, I'm gonna guess there's 15 high schools in Cobb County. I don't know that, but I bet I don't miss it much. Mm -hmm. A lot more than there used to be. Yes, sir, without question. Uh, did you associate at all when you were growing up with the kids that were going to Roberts School? Uh, don't Roberts where now? Uh, the black school. Oh. Uh, Roberts. Oh, okay. Uh, I, in, in terms of the black school, I think that we oftentimes once my age think of Lemon Street, which was in Marietta, and that yeah. was a, that was a high the school. High school. I was yes, sir. But the elementary. now, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, dude. Played uh, uh, together. Yeah, uh, uh, it, it it wasn't. I I just I'll go back to saying that whether the black kids or white kids or whoever you were, uh, for the most part, I'm not going to say you went over and spent the night or something like that, but certainly we interacted without a doubt. Uh, there was no question. I, I think all of us did, uh, and and that was a uh, a time. Again, I'll go back to saying, you know, of innocence, a time of innocence, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'll let it go at that. Um, Atworth Beach opened up when you were a child. Yes, sir. Um, did you? Yeah, well, you memories of that. Th there you go. All right. Uh, the, uh, Bill and Mary Sue Casey, my cousin, uh, ran the beach house and, and the beach. So when all of their kids, all of the Casey girls, and, and, and they had, it was just girls then, but they would be over there. And of course, here comes cousin George, and in you would go, and, and, and oh yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody, I think, went to the beach and you had this little raft out there and was roped off and went out there and swam. And then uh, as we got older, I'll say, excuse me, 15, 16, 17 years old, we used to have, the, they would have uh, uh, beach parties in the summertime on Saturday night. They called them Big U Baby Hops. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they would be bands or what have you would come and they'd play. Of course, at the beach house itself, it had a dance hall and in with a jukebox and on any given day in the summertime, especially in the afternoon or on Saturdays, there'd always be a pretty good crowd in the dance hall in there. We gathered up out there in the parking lot when we were driving, uh, we were legally driving and and in the parking lot. And that was a, that was a good place to go. And I, I, I dare say most anybody was out there or everybody was out there at one point or, or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had great memories of the Agward B. So you uh, um, left here, went to West Georgia for school and uh, with uh, a few things in between, <laughs> eventually graduated, got a doctorate in leadership and uh, had a, a lifetime career at either West Georgia, uh, University of West Georgia yes. nowadays or uh, the the Carroll County School System. Uh, as you come back to Ackworth now, uh, what's your impression of Ackworth today uh, compared to what it used to be? Okay. It's a, you can't tell where Marietta ends and Kennesaw begins, or where Kennesaw ends and Ackworth begins. And that's at its simplest form. Ackworth is a metropolitan, huge area. It's just, it, in my opinion, it's overgrown. Uh, it's uh, the development all the way through the county. There's very little raw land, and it certainly has changed. I don't live here, so I can't say if it's changed for the better or for the worse. Uh, that would be in the eyes of the beholder. It is certainly much larger and much more metropolitan. I went to West Georgia to go to school. 
not having, then it was West Georgia, not having any idea that I would live there. Mm -hmm. Boyd was the president. There you go, Dr. Boyd. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we were trying to remember that. There you go. <laughs> and his wife would come across campus, and boy, you didn't dare cut anything down. Miss Boyd would have a fit. Really? Uh, yeah, oh, oh I'm, that was way back. Okay. Uh, uh, the master plan of the gardening and the trees and everything on mm -hmm. campus. All right. The reason that I am still in Carrollton is Carrollton in 2018 is Ackworth with 25,000 people. And it's what Ackworth was when I was a teenager. We are Mayberry, if you will, Carrollton is. But it is what Ackworth was when I grew up. Even though the numbers are big, you still, I don't care where you go in town, what you're doing, you will see people you know every day. I, when I leave here today, doesn't matter if I stop at McDonald's, I can almost bet you somebody will be in there that I know or acquainted with. That was Ackworth, you know, 55 years ago. Uh, and I like that. I really still like that atmosphere, if you will. Uh, we are, I was on the board of commissioners. Uh, I've served on numerous committees and civic organizations there since I've been there. And I'm going somewhere with this, but over the years, Carrollton has had some very, very Carroll County. Let me back up. I, I, I don't want to just, mm -hmm. I'm going to put some Carroll County. Very forward thinking, progressive individuals that made sure that we didn't get urban sprawl and that somebody couldn't come in and build a chicken house next door to you, uh, if you will. I think personally that Ackworth over the years has had, the city of Ackworth has had people that had that same thought process, that same progressive forward look to ensure that, for instance, what we're doing right now yeah. um, is that little part of Ackworth. It can, you can't ever, you can't go back. It isn't gonna change, I mean, we, we can't. Uh, but you can certainly preserve part of it in hopes that in the future that, that, that people would, would pick up on it and, and see those things. I mean, come on, I mean, when I was a kid, Man, you're 13, 14 years old, every one of us drove a car on every back street and, and, and act with they And as long as you didn't act stupid, nobody bothered you. Uh, and and 15, then you got your driver's license at 16, and you could get out on the big road, you know. Uh, uh, that day is gone forever. Uh, we can reminisce. And I may want to close this or for you by saying that my dad, I was 90 when he died, <laughs> he used to say that, oh, he would say, I don't remember the good old days. He said, I like that thing over there on the wall. When I get hot, I turn it down. And when I get cold, I turn it up. I don't have to bring in cold. I don't have to bring in firewood. Uh, and I really like that indoor plumbing. Uh, and, and, and that's an overused phrase of indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. uh, and TVs, if you will. I was, well, you see it now, I was the remote, if, if you will. Right. And it, uh, the, you gotta protect the past, but you, and people need to know about it. Uh, I, I have a second family, if you will. I've got an 18-year-old and a 17-year-old. I'm 72, 
And my son, who's 17, uh, one of his teachers told him, said, Trey, you're just a little old man. And he said, you ever met my daddy? <laughs> now, and it's things that I and you were raised to do, to open the door, to say thank you, say please. You don't call people by their first name, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, politeness, uh, and, and a lot of that's gone. And I mean, I was in public education and I know what it is. And I don't have a corner on the market in terms of raising my children, I will tell you that. Uh, but I have tried to instill the values and my wife mm -hmm. that we grew up with that seem to be disappearing. Well, Dr. Pope, I think we could go on forever, <laughs> but um, I guess we, that was a very good way to wind it up. Well, thank you so much. I, I, it was a privilege to be here.